be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the Council, including transparent outside of Australia. Council acknowledges that we are meeting on traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge that they are of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. And we also extend their respect to the Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Have an apologies from Councillor Kira. Um, I now seek a move and a seconder for the minutes of the meeting held on the 18th of May to be taken as read and be confirmed as accurate recording of the proceedings. Councillor Hyde, a seconder. Councillor Connell, would you like to speak to her? Councillor Hyde? No. Let's take to a vote. Those in favour? Those against? Motion's carried. Members, we're going to go directly to item number 5.12, um, purely because we have the chair of ACMA here and uh, Mark Booth. Um, so regarding the Adelaide Central Market Authority Charter Review. Uh, Tom? Thank you, presiding member. Thank you, councillors. Uh, tonight is really to bring back uh, what is a an extensive review of the Act of Charter Foundation documents and also to feed back to Council the, the consultation that we received and weaved into the documents from both ACMA and through various traders within the central market and also Council as well. Tonight before you we have a draft charter and also a head lease and an operating agreement which has been extensively reviewed and consulted with uh, as late as yesterday in regards to ACMA and uh, we'll open it up to questions very shortly but I just want to hand over to the Chair of ACMA um, to say a few words. Um, thank you. This document, uh, our charter and together with other documents has been reviewed and reviewed and reviewed. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank the administration for the help and the assistance they have given us. Uh, in order for us to be very clear about it, we held an extraordinary meeting um, on Monday morning and uh, we come here to you today to say that we have approval. There might be some further adjustments, minor adjustments, that might come through in the next two or three days from the representative elector of the Council, Councillor Hyde. Uh, hopefully uh, we have finished with the consultation and the documentation we have with what we've got before us and what was before you today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any questions? Any discussions in regards to this matter? Councillor Kamal? Just a couple of questions. Um, and then it's just in reference, I mean, I, I know that, I know that the, the Traders Representative Committee, etc., and, and the meeting, but it also has a, 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 a reference in it to TAG, and obviously the TAG is in the, uh, the, the dictionary in the, in the front, but otherwise there's no references to it as in, as in its involvement in or how you would do that. So, how is that coming? Through your presiding member, in response to your question, Councillor, I think that there will be a suggested amendment which strengthens up the definition of TAG. I think it's under uh, 1.12 of the definitions of how you're looking at the, the report. But uh, effectively, what it talks to is that uh, ACMA physically recognises TAG as an entity and will be there to, to first of all provide operational support and also it's a two-way communication so it gives reference and recognition of TAG as a group, as an entity. And uh, also with the Traders Association, I did that, I just haven't seen it in there, but I assume it's interesting. Same. Okay, and uh, and just as a, as, uh, as a last question, and that is regards to uh, um, the agenda that for that representative group, um, how uh, does that mirror the you know the uh, board um, you know uh, agenda? As in you know the, so those things that are outside outside confidentiality, um, does how, how does that refer that in, uh, that's brought up in this uh, representative committee, just for sort of some sort of transparency? 
uh, through you, presiding member, in response to the question, is that uh, first of all, any meeting of the committee or the traders' representation committee, first of all, agendas are set, uh, information is provided, ensured is minted, it goes to the ECMA board, and then ECMA are duty bound to respond and work practical action whenever is appropriate. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. McCready. Um, the uh, talking about the agenda being set, the minutes being, you know, uh, sent on and that sort of thing. Who sets the agenda? Who would be responsible for it under this charter? Through you, presiding member, that the first meeting will be a calling of the relevant parties, and actually in regards to the structure, is two ACMA nominated board members. There's three representatives of TAG, including the chair, and two independents who could be a traders association or whatever. The first meeting will be to set and determine terms of reference of that group. That's really important to, to establish that. And then effectively, uh, the minutes will be captured by ECMA, but it will be actually shared with all parties so they are in agreement in regards to those minutes. So it's a clear and accurate record of what actually has been discussed and then presented to ECMA for, for review as well. And, and so regarding the terms of reference, you just said that the representative committee would set the terms of reference. Did you misspeak or, or, or is the committee the committee setting its own terms of reference, not the board? Through you, presiding member, the first thing that we identified was that the, the group that's been formed, the committee, is there for operational purposes, not to talk to leases. So they will be responsible to sit down collectively to work through those terms of references. Matters to be discussed will be, as I say, operational, linked to marketing, linked to uh, any sort of uh, events, activities, general operational items that tenants would be interested in within the market and kept abreast of, and also to highlight ACMA and bring matters through to ACMA as well. And what would the um, method of election be for those independent members? The independent members has been open to, first of all, if there's anyone from the uh, Traders Association who wish to take part, or indeed there's members within our retailers within uh, <coughs> Central Market who are not members of either the Traders Association or TAG, so if they wish to take part, that's there. TAG is a, a little bit more deliberate where it talks to the chair and nominated to representatives. So that's up to TAG to determine who they wish to put forward in regards to that. But what we have effectively tried to do, instead of just having one representative, we're opening up to five representatives from the floor, so there's more voices to be heard. But, but sorry, what, what is the method of selection or election of those members? Again, that can be determined at the term of reference, so they can actually deliberate that. However, TAG are a form body and they actually do their own, non, they have their own representatives which are based on the themes. So for instance, when we're talking fruit and veg, there will be representatives from there, butchery, so on and so forth. It's up to TAG who they wish to bring through. At the minute, uh, effectively, they just have one representative which was on the ECMA board, which was the chair of TAG, but they can actually bring people through. Uh, the board, or sorry, the committee could also request or invite people along to that committee. Sorry, no, I don't. So sorry, sorry. Reference, if, until terms of reference set, then the reality is then it's not done on a voter base. It's three members of TAG. Yeah. TAG determine who that is, but inclusive of the chair. Yeah. Two independents, two. two independents, it could be members of the Traders Association, and a call will go out for those who wish to be interested in, the, in that board. But the TAG have three and two members of the ECMA board, which you're a member of. Yeah, but, it, but on the two, mm -hmm. you're talking about the method of election and select, and or selection, which the Charter is silent on. Mm -hmm. So you're saying the board will work out who they put on, TAG will work out who they put on, we'll they'll call, meet. And we'll call for nominations in regard to any independents who wish be members of that committee. Yeah, and in the event there are more than two. Then we'll figure out the mechanism in regards to sorting that out. Okay. Yeah. Who figures it out? The board, the city, or the board? The board. The board. Okay. All right. Thank you. No, man. Um, thank you. That it, that was a little bit confusing. Um, uh, I just it's more of a comment in that um, uh, in 
quite a few years ago, uh, I was part of a board where they did actually set up subcommittees of the board for this very reason, so they had representation. Um, probably um, Councillor Mackey would remember when the Board of Governors for the Adelaide Festival were no longer Board of Governors. And so uh, what we did is um, set up representation um, and it was a clear way uh, for communication to and through the board and back to uh, those um, members. Um, the, the ACMA board members, so in this one, it's got two ACMA board members. In the subcommittees that we set up, the board member was the chair of that subcommittee. And um, therefore the agenda came from the board through the chair of the subcommittee to the committee so that they could deliberate on what was being happening. So um, I'm hoping that will be fleshed out, of course, in the terms of reference, but um, the agenda did come from the board to the subcommittee very clearly and then back up to the board. So subcommittees were marketing or development or uh, fundraising or um, um, membership based. It was quite clear, the, the remit, so um, and I'm sure that'll be sorted out as we go forward. Thank you. Any other questions? No? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attendance here tonight. Sorry, Chair, I have to leave. I have a Thank you, members. We are going to go to the first item of the agenda, which is 5.1 at the Toy Library, Chris Anthony. Would you we're opening up to any questions and discussions? We're taking this item as read, so any questions? Yes, Councillor Martin. I just wonder um, uh, why we're charging a fee to run the service, um, uh, which is $2,000 a year, um, given that other councils don't charge, West Torrens don't. Ours will be inferior to West Torrens, as in terms of dedicated space, but we're charging. <laughs> To the presiding member, um, the rationale for that is experience talking to other tour libraries is that if you actually have a fee, then um, it encourages people to participate and to look after the toys in a different way. So we've looked at a fee that's lower than the surrounding tour library. So we've, we've had a look and seen what they're charging. We're going to have a smaller tour library, so we're suggesting a lower fee and also a concession fee that would be half the standard valuation. And, and why haven't we, uh, we're proposing, um, I think it's four toys every two weeks, whereas other places it's 15, 10, 12, so we're much, much more. And we're still charging? Yes. Um, for for the, those reasons, we're looking for the Explain to you. Yep. It's been answered. Yep. Any, yep. Other, any other questions? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, I just wanted to know why, uh, Chair, um, we can't provide actually a free service for people with a concession card or a health card mm -hmm. rather than just giving them $5 discount or $6. Thank you. Uh, through the presiding member, um, once again, it's, it is purely a recommendation and it is based on um, experience from talking to other tour libraries about the best method possible. Obviously, we will um, be as supportive as we possibly can to people who are borrowing the toys. Sure. Um, uh, Chair, can, can I just foreshadow that I would like to amend this to make the service free to people with health care cards and concession cards? Um, out of respect for the administration, I think it's important to let them know in advance. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions? Yes. Um, thanks, Chair. Uh, this is just a, a, a quick operational one, and I'm sure Andy will be able to respond through you, uh, Chair, given your role at the library as well. Um, in a COVID context, in terms of the, the hygiene factor for the toys loan, I'd just be interested to know that we have regard for that. 
through the presiding chair. Um, yes, we have thought about this already, um, and toy libraries are very difficult to manage from a hygiene point of view. That's part of the rationale with having a musical toy library. The toys are going to um, be mainly um, wooden toys, toys without too many parts. There'll be um, a staff member plus volunteers. There'll be a cleaning regime. There will be guidelines around how we manage it. Um, so yes, we have thought about it, and we will we'll be managing that very carefully. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. We'll go to the next item, 5.2. I'm taking all um, items tonight as read. Um, Christy, are you here for the Community Impact Grants and Strategic Partnerships Operating Guidelines as well? Um, so any uh, questions or discussion regarding to item 5.2? Yes? Councillor Martin? Just a quick one. Um, the, did the previous Community Development and Sport and Recreation Grants Chair um, that, and you might be able to answer this yourself anyway. That's for administration to answer tonight, uh, Councillor Martin. Okay, that's fine. Um, did they include the commercial organisations as well as um, applicants? Chris? Through the chair, no, this is a new uh, development that we'd like you to consider. Okay, and, and the chair, what's the reason for this? Chris? Through the chair, we think that this is a way in which we will be able to pick up a lot of groups that haven't otherwise been able to work with us. For example, um, there are now companies that are doing things such as um, for purpose and community development and, and commercial organisations that do things that we'd like to work with them for. For example, um, a PT instructor or a yoga instructor um, from time to time would like to come outside and do something that we think would be really beneficial to the community and would therefore be eligible um, through their company where in, in the past they haven't been. Okay and um, Chair, um, am I correct in understanding now that we will allow um, uh, commercial organisations to apply for infrastructure to be built on private land? Christy, is that what you're talking about? Take that on notice. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay. And just uh, um, one thing about these strategic partnerships. These are the, the big ticket items that go up to 50,000, I think, from memory. Um, uh, on page 25, um, they will involve uh, commercial organisations, I gather. But my question to the administration is why is the approval for such grants um, being uh, done or proposed under CEO delegation when all else comes to council when it's uh, more than $10,000. Through the chair, these new uh, partnerships are slightly different to grants. With a grant, we will call for what people would like to do, assess them thoroughly. With the strategic partnerships, we might also be able to put out uh, an idea of something we would like to stimulate in the market, for example, something with international students, call for submissions, have a very transparent process and then negotiate with them. And it may include some other resources on our part um, and certainly staffing in order to make sure we have a win-win, a, a, um, an agreement that matches our strategic priorities as well as something that they, they can deliver for us. I can give you an example if that's helpful. Yep. Uh, for example, we'd like to perhaps stimulate something more with international students because we know through our wellbeing dashboard and through our strategic um, plan that this is an area of focus for us. So we could perhaps write a partnership to that end, call for applications, assess them and then negotiate with them. Let's say it was an organisation who is doing something with um, volunteers or uh, students already and we could ask them to do something specifically that meets our priorities rather than just a call out. So in that regard, we need to negotiate with them further. And we believe that um, the resources would be required at our end, which would need the CEO to sign off. So it just wouldn't come to council at all, is that correct? Oh, sorry, through the chair. Uh, not for uh, authorising, we will certainly be bringing you updates and letting you know what we're doing in that regard. Thank you. Councillor Brimsdale. Thank you, Chair. Just, um, just quickly um, clarifying when you're talking about for purpose organisations, we're talking about social enterprises. Correct. 
Thank you. Thanks, Maureen. Yeah, um, I didn't quite understand that. What, what is the um, negative of bringing it to council? It's a lot of money. Um, you know, wh why don't you want to bring it to council? What? Uh, through the chair, we're happy to take your lead if you would like those to come through. No, but like we, we think that actually we might be um, in, in good conversation with them. That uh, means that we have got some expectation and we'll be in negotiation with them of what we would like them to do for us and what they'll do yeah. um, vice versa. So at that point, if it came through the chamber and was not to proceed, mm -hmm. um, that can, you know, there's, there's reputational and, and relationship um, relationships there that we need to go quite down the track in relation to a, a, a co-delivered partnership. Um, and further, as I say, there will be resources required that um, we don't, we would need to make sure we have CEO sign off for that. So it was just a simplification of the process. To get us yeah, the simplification and moving all the elected body from the process. Um, I, I'll be moving the amendment that, uh, that the, it comes to the council, it doesn't have to come at the end there, Chris, it can come at the beginning and give you a certain leeway to do it. So you can do that and you're not let down at the end. But it's a lot of money um, and it, it does lead to um, a bad look from the community when their elected body doesn't have the oversight of these large amounts of money. I'm not saying that there's anything untoward, yeah. but um, it, it, is, um, it is important that it's signed off by the community. Tom, you want to make a comment on that? Thank you, presiding member. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, I think uh, maybe the suggestion is uh, it, what I'm hearing is for council to have line of sight before any uh, any money is exchanged or, or any grants or whatever, but it doesn't preclude us to go down the road and having discussions with uh, entities to get it briefed up or whatever, so we'll take that on notice and come back in course. I think that's quite important. So we want council to be involved in the decision making process. Councillor Mackey. Thank you, Chair. I'm grateful through you to uh, uh, Christy uh, for being able to answer a couple of other questions this afternoon. There are a, a couple of other small ones. Um, in relation to the um, quick response grants and the grants that are offered more than once per year, are there limitations on the number of times in a given year that an individual uh, or an individual organisation can seek assistance? No. Through the chair, no. Thank you. And the uh, other question in, on page uh, 14 of the, uh, of the the guidelines regarding strategic partnerships, uh, where we're talking about the amount per application of 25 to 50k, is that per year over three years or a total over the three years? Through the chair, total. Thanks. Councillor Just with the, uh, you know, with those, uh, again, those little projects that uh, initiated through uh, Council, um, just thinking about, you know, because it is a negotiation about the delivery. So the question is, um, if it is going to need to come back to the councillors, at what point do we do this? Is that the point of the inception of the idea? Um, because afterwards, if it's a negotiation, then it does need to be a level of confidentiality, doesn't it? For us to be able to have you know, a, a, you know, a, a conversation about it, uh, because there is then, you know, somebody's providing a service. So what, how would we do that? Well, the simple fact is that, so here, here's the, here is the concept and idea. So is that, the, is that the time we say, hey, look, we've got this idea, this is roughly going, you know, oh, this is where we want to further this. It comes to council and the council says, yeah, great idea and continue on. The question is afterwards, if there is a negotiation about the providing of that service and the and it, sums of money, and again, this is about a negotiation. So is this something that needs to be got in confidence? Um, because it is, a, it is about a, a, you know, a commercial transaction, even if it's with a, 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 you know, for purpose top organizations. Tom. Thank you, Presiding Member. Uh, first and foremost, any any case that comes forward based on the Council of Martin and Council of Moran's commentary is we would hope that we'd be able to work with individuals or consortiums or parties to understand what the grant they're applying for and how it's going to be applied. So we would have a lot of information in advance and potentially know what the cost is. The issues in regards to confidentiality depends on what sort of agreement you're entering into and then what you're doing. what is the risk in regards to divulging that. So we'll come back in regards to that. That would be presented on an individual basis if there was confidentiality to be 
to be maintained. My, my question was mainly about the, the our council initiated ideas, not, not necessarily the other because you know they, they bring it, but it's just that if we come up with a great idea, how do we process that and bring it, you know, and enable the, uh, the chamber to be involved as well? That was all. Through you, presiding member, I think the answer is you've got various mechanisms, motions, questions, all of this, or just open dialogue through our workshop. Thank you. Um, um, thank you. I'm going to move to the next item. Um, 5.3 of the Stretch Reconciliation Action Plan for 2021 to 2024 for final endorsement. I have Rick here with you. Um, ask you any questions or any discussions in regards to this item? Councillor Mackey? Uh, thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, I'd just be interested in, in through you, Chair, um, what do you consider to be the stretchiest bits of this um, new stretch plan? It's not a trick question, generally. Yeah. Just the middle. Through the chair. Um, what I'm finding is that we are stretching in relation to our implementation from a strategic practical level in relation to policy, input starting to embed actions in policies because then that will allow for longevity um, of change and consistency through that, regardless of who's in what position. Thank you. No other questions? Okay, great. Thank you. Go to 5.4. 5.4, we've got the uh, quarterly forward procurement report. Um, is Grace going to be presenting that? <laughs> okay, great, thank you. Um, any questions, any um, items for discussion in regards to 5.4? Councillor Martin? Um, yeah, look, the $4 million, $3 to $4 million allocated for CCTV, it says the funding was coming from uh, city deals. Um, I'm just wondering, Chair, oh, is that the same money that was allocated in the agreement with the federal government and which we were going to spend, I thought, on other things as well? CEO. Uh, thank you, through the Chair. Um, some members may remember some time ago that city deal was announced. I think um, Council was fortunate to receive a quantum of money around 10 million associated with various projects, one of which was City Wi-Fi. So those business cases are still being developed. Um, and obviously this has further progressed and tonight we're just flagging that there will be some forward procurement in relation to the CCTV. And, and these are CCTVs that are to be plugged into the police monitor network or separate CCTVs? CEO. Uh, thank you, through the Chair. Um, this does involve our CCTV as part of a public safety aspect. Um, the, um, the attributes associated with that and the, um, and the, uh, the was currently subject um, of um, work that's been underway for some considerable time. And it's also the subject of a council a uh, motion from a couple of years ago that Councillor Sims had raised in relation to the scope of that. That still needs to be brought back to Council uh, for consideration. That's uh, the, the one related to personal? Yes. Uh, yes. Well. yes. And, and uh, may I ask, um, we were told at the time that the SAPOL desk, which through which all of this throws, uh, flows rather, needed to be upgraded. Is that part of this? Through the society member, um, no, as far as I'm aware, that's not part of this, but I would need to just clarify. I don't think the um, detailed um, components of, of that have been developed as such at this point. Okay, no, that's fine. And just one final question in relation to recyclables. The administration is asking for approval of the expenditure, but it doesn't have, I think it says, determine the market approach. Um, pending outcome of current movements in the supply market. Um, what, why are we being asked to approve it without the administration having determined how, he's, how it's going to go about it? Grace? 
Uh, thanks. Thanks for the question through the chair. Um, the contract is definitely coming up for uh, reviewing that we actually need to um, you know, renew it um, and therefore it will fall into that quarter. The market approach is whether we look at a request for tender or request for quote um, just based on the fact that there's movement in the waste market at the moment with um, a couple of companies merging and things like that so we don't know. We're just waiting to see what the supplier market is doing before we kind of work out what the right market approach is and whether it be a a full tender or um, looking at specific quotes. And uh, can I ask, Chair, um, is this uh, for plastic bottles and things of that nature? Plastic? Uh, thank you. Yes, it's all recyclables. Yes. Yeah. Just the, it's it's kind of yellow lead bin, if we think about it. Okay. Thank you. Well, um, it might not be ready, but the uh, investment that was just announced by federal government in terms of the recycling plants, north and south, do you know what the time frame for them coming online is? Uh, through the chair, um, no, not specifically yet. I know that there was specific investments around um, uh, a particular plant at north around paper um, and the other investment was around murphing. So, Different, different levels of recyclables, but we're not sure when they're going to come online yet. And, and, and the, uh, the period of time that this contract will cover? Uh, I'd have to go back and have a look at that because it's not necessarily going to be exactly the same period that we've got this um, one coming up for review because obviously we're going out in the first quarter. Whether we then look at a shorter period for this to align with what's going on in the market, that could be another reason why our approach is still open. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm moving on to 5.5. So, uh, rebuilding Adelaide's nightlife. Leandro. Uh, any, or open up to discussions, Lord Mayor? Um, thank you, Chair. I have a few questions. Um, I am unsure why we're going to straight to an expression of interest. Um, my question is really around the motion asked for us to investigate and at uh, 14, 15, 16, um, 14 in particular, it says there are 35 cities across the world that have a nightmare or ambassador role, um, but it doesn't actually tell us what they do, how they're engaged, uh, what the outcomes have been, which models have worked, which models haven't worked. Um, I, I do understand that Sydney decided not to do one and Melbourne's put in a, a, an advisory committee, but um, I was hoping for more information around what actually has worked, um, particularly in those other cities. Um, I think the original discussion, which goes back probably two councils, was around uh, the Burgermeister, uh, which is in Amsterdam, and then last council around the London nightmare. So uh, I'd be very keen to get more information before we go to an AI process. Hello, Chair. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, and we, we are happy to come back with a more comprehensive report and bring you more information about the successful, the success or not of, of these cases in particular. Uh, I think what we were looking for with this report today was to um, get some green light to start working on the terms of reference for to go out for an expression of interest and look for a nighttime advocate because based on the research that we conducted so far uh, we thought that that would be the best approach but we are happy to bring more information into 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 the timber with, with a more comprehensive report and, and including an analysis of what has been successful or, or not in these cases. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, look, I actually agree with the Lord Mayor. I, I think um, having an EI, EOI process at this point without understanding what the benefits are of having uh, this advocate um, or nightmare um, uh, is the wrong way around. We should have all that information and then we can act on it. And the other thing is um, that the administration references at 21 that there will be a cost and I'm just wondering what that cost is. So, the chair, we we haven't decided what the cost would be because we were 
going to come back with the terms of reference that would include exactly what the cost would be for for this for the appointment of this uh, role. And the only thing that I could probably add to that is that it would be in line with similar roles that we that we have at the moment. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, go to we've got the next item. 5.6 COVID-19 financial impact. We have Grace back again. Any questions or any items of discussion? I take the papers as read. Um, Councillor Martin. Uh, look, I'm just I'm trying to understand this. Uh, um, this document, the financial one, is it correct that it mixes together revenue shortfalls, council decisions to spend money, um, you know, like rent-free periods, savings through council events, and things like the lunch vouchers that I either gave away, and then puts it all together and says that's the cost of COVID. Is that is that what I'm seeking? Grace, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes. So this is basically every area of the business that was impacted by COVID. So whether it's Lunch stimulus, vouchers. whether it's lunch vouchers, whether it's reduction in revenue, reduction in expenditure, etc. Oh, well, it's uh, good to know that uh, the, the lunch vouchers flow from COVID. That's good. Um, can I ask specifically um, about the reference to the budget repair of $4.75 million? Is, is the budget repair the decision uh, that the uh, majority took in relation to wiping the overspending next financial year? And just asking the administration to find savings. Is this it? Uh, it's in paragraph eight. Great. Thank you, through the chair. Uh, yes. So the 4.75 budget repair item is the amount put in through as a result of the motion um, um, to bring the um, budget for next year to break even. Yep. And so whilst we um, have split that in the budget at the moment between revenue and expenditure, we uh, planning and reporting back through to council on how we're achieving that 4.75. So there are some of these things that may um, contribute to the achievement of that 4.75 next year and make sure that that's reported through to council. And, and Chair, does that $4.75 million include the cycling infrastructure money that's just been um, discussed? It doesn't. Great. Um, thank you, through the Chair. No, the, the um, bike queen, uh, the cycling infrastructure um, was removed in the um, plan that was put out for consultations. We didn't have the information. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And look, just one final thing. It does seem um, a bit frightening to me that um, there are 414 rate players that we put in the hands of collection agencies. Is, is there a criteria for that, Chair? Thank you, through the chair. Um, there's a process, a lengthy process we go through before they get diverted to a collection agent. Um, in terms of um, us having different interventions in asking them to seek the money beforehand, various payment plans that we could put in place, um, applications for hardship if that, um, that qualifies post payments. There's a whole, whole lot of um, things that we can go through from a collection point before we actually refer to a collection agency Does is our last resort. Thank you. Thank you. Any, Any other questions or items for discussion? No. Okay, thanks, Grace. Moving on to the next item, 5.7. Um, Adelaide's Christmas Festival Action Plan 2021 2024. Christy here to present. Um, any questions? Any items for discussion?
Yeah, quorum, quorum six, so yes, if you want to, quorum six. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, you can if you like. You're welcome. Okay. Um, right. Right. <laughs> Councillor Knoll. I think we've got questions around that. I mean, obviously, we're not getting any um, government support about the promotion. So I just ask a few questions around that because, I mean, uh, we are talking about wanting to spend money per se. Um, and so my question is first, um, uh, the what target markets are we trying to do? Well, we have our residents and obviously, you know, we want to make sure that they know how to use the bus and where they can access it. Um, but we're also then looking at other people that uh, we can use this as a, as a service on behalf of for visitors, etc. So how do we do that? And so, um, so I'll just go through as well as a bit further. So if we're looking at for, for locals, obviously it's about enabling them to see the signage where the bus routes are and perhaps a, a notification that, you know, here's the bus routes, here is, you know, here's the timetable and, here, and things like that. Um, but I'm talking more about then as using it as an attractor. So how do how we would do this um, with uh, the visitors to Adelaide, um, and you know how how would we see that? Uh, because we're talking about a lot of online and all sorts of things, but not necessarily talking to people when they're thinking about the service, rather than just a general communication about there's one there. So because you need to link the capacity for uh, you know someone think oh, I'd like to use that with the ability to say oh here's how you do this. And so I'm just asking that is, you know, about where you put your effort. And the other is, you know, a more tangible things for visitors and that is working with hotels, etc., where you can give people things and, and explain how the city works. I hope there's a question that you can work in that. <laughs> Thank you, and through the chair. Um, yes, yeah, so there's a range of uh, free options that have been uh, identified here, which uh, include uh, social media, on hold messages uh, through the concierge. Uh, digital screens throughout the, the city and within our uh, community uh, libraries, etc., um, and then uh, piggybacking on the existing communications that we have, uh, including rates notices, etc. So that picks up, uh, I suppose, a number of the both residential and business businesses within the, the city. The the visitor um, arrangement can be done through uh, brochures and distribution um, uh, through hotels. Um, obviously, that. Uh, comes at a cost. So I suppose the purpose of the report tonight is to identify is there a desire to um, have a paid uh, uh, mechanism or to go with the current uh, proposed um, free opportunities that both DIT and uh, Council can provide um, through our existing means. Thank you. Anyone else? Lord Mayor? Um, the uh, and noting that your recommendation is to do the free thing, but I do actually think um, a brochure distribution to city hotels uh, for and we do we are getting visitors to the city. There's lots of interstate and interstate people coming into the city at the moment. Um, would be the one thing that I would sort of call out um, in terms of getting into the hotels and the people that may not know where the. Um, connect bus routes or that there is a free bus full stop. We can get to city residents fairly easily through rates notices and community centres and libraries and all of those things. It's actually visitors to the city that probably have no idea that we've got a connect bus and I note that that was approximately $3,000. Thank you. We'll move on to the next item. Thank you. 5.9. Heritage Incentive Scheme allocation over $50,000. We have Rick here. Any items for discussion or questions in relation to this item? No? All good? Okay, next item 5.10. Rating policy for 2021 to 22. We have Grace back here again. Any questions and the items or discussion in regards to this item? Councillor Martin? Uh, yeah, look, I, I just wondered, Chair, um, we have, as a consequence of public feedback, um, removed the 1% discount upfront of paying rates because uh, as the um, uh, response 
to our consultation showed people regarded it as a joke. Um, we have re retained the special discretionary rebate at 10% um, because there was such an overwhelming um, uh, consultation results and, you know, uh, leave it at 10%. But we're removing the poor old pensioner and self-funded retiree rebate, even though the consultation uh, showed that there was an even stronger result in which people said, don't do it. Why did we decide to do it when it was as strong as all of the other consultation results? Chris? Uh, thank you for, um, for the question through the chair. Um, it was it was mainly because there was the already the, uh, the the pension rebate is tied to the cost of living concession allowance. So um, the the rebate points are really around people not um, and a little bit with the special discretionary rebates or not understanding how it was applied. So um, thinking that they wouldn't get anything, um, whereas the cost of living concession they actually have to be able to get that to be eligible to receive the pension rebate under our. Um, rebate policy anyway. Um, so I guess it was it was our, our kind of um, interpretation of the um, community consultation that it wasn't that they weren't getting any rebate at all. It was just they were going to get the cost of living concession through, which is at a higher value through the state government than yep. ours. So it was just interpretation of that consultation because the consultation was very much around we don't think you should take this away and, and not give them anything. If they still are getting something, they're just not getting it through us, they're getting it through the state government. Uh, what, what was it costing us previously? Um, the value of that was 50, 50 just so 50,000. 50,000. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, look, uh, Chair, if I can, I can foreshadow for the administration. I'll, I'll be moving an amendment that we do not remove, but we retain the pension and self funded retiree. A rebate. I think it's important, and I think for fifty thousand dollars, it will cause um, more angst. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Foreshadowed that to administration. Um, no other questions. No? Okay, great. We're going to move on to five point eleven, um, Adelaide Parklands Regulation two thousand and six. We have um, Martin here to answer any questions or uh, anything you would like to discuss in relation to this item. Would anyone like to go for this one? No? Okay, we're all good. Thank you. Next slide. 5.13. Uh, we we uh, got Grace back again on the procurement policy. We're taking this item as red and we're open to any discussions or any questions. Councillor Donovan. Thanks, through the chair. Um, I had assumed that this, uh, the action plan, would be implemented more within each procurement um, process, as opposed to it looks as though we would be running specific social procurement processes as as a separate process to our standard procurement process. Am I reading that correctly? Uh, thank you for the question through the chair. Um, yes, it's sort of more like an action plan that's work that needs to be done to continue to drive the focus around social procurement and and encouraging um, like those sort of five areas of social procurement to be um, like to partake in the process. The piece that will change in every procurement process will be the evaluation criteria, which will be more aligned to that those social procurement factors now. So. Every procurement will have an evaluation criteria that has weighting for social procurement factors in those five areas. Um, and those five areas um, will have of that weighting, you can either get that whole weighting in one social procurement area or across all five, it just depends on who's tendering for the process and how that's being done. So that will be applied to every procurement process. But the action plan is more around how do we broaden the understanding, the education more broadly across markets to encourage social procurement through various policies in conjunction with state government, et cetera, because um, to be honest, we don't have the value of spend in council alone to be able to really sort of drive and impact this as, as, as much. So 
um, whilst we're taking the lead position around we want to continue driving social procurement, it's really going to be around how we create those sort of relationships and broader education with regards to sort of different state government levels and um, sort of using other bodies around sort of supply nation or um, you know the, um, sort of the Aboriginal sector that we can actually build those sorts of things and because we the issues around the supply market, not necessarily around our process. So it's more around the supply market. So we need to help drive the supply market more broadly. Um, but the actual procurement process will consider social procurement in every evaluation. And would there be an intention to move toward a target of spend at some point? Yes, so what we're, what we're working towards in terms of the guidelines that support that support the policy is implementation of targets. The question is, is it spent or is it number of businesses, um, you know, types of businesses that we uh, include in each process or consider in each process. So we, we're just trying to work out again through those actions around what the most appropriate target is because the value of spend is not necessarily always applicable um, or the best measure. So we've got to find those those best measures. And we've, we've started some conversations at the moment with sort of um, working with DIT and state government because they've, they've um, got sort of some dedicated resources in this space where we're trying to actually work out whether we can do combined spend across the levels of government and all that sort of stuff. So that would actually then broaden the targets to be broader than just City of Adelaide from the council perspective. Okay, so thanks, David. Thank you. Any other questions, Councillor Martin? Uh, just a brief one, uh, Chair. Um, uh, related to the um, the ceiling on uh, procurements, um, valued over one hundred and fifty thousand. That is, that committee is to do uh, a, a competitive process on anything over one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Is that the same figure as it was before? Uh, thank you for the question through the chair. No, before it was 100. So we we are suggesting to lift it to 150. 150. And can I just ask why? Just inflation or? Uh, uh, no, it just reflects more on the value of spend the, the, in terms of the volumes that we get sort of um, around that mark. Um, so when we did our data analysis to inform the thresholds, we, we sort of pick the, the number of volumes of uh, spend and where they actually happen. And the reality of it is, is a lot of them actually happen above, well, literally above the 150 mark. So the volume of transactions that happen between 100 and 150 are quite minimal. So I mean, lifting the threshold, you're still capturing the broader amount of transactions that, need, that should go to open market. So we do that all based on data analysis. We don't kind of just guess what number it should be. Um, it is around data analysis, volume of transactions, and then trying to pick the most efficient point. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Yeah, okay. That concludes. That's our last item. Um, so now with this, yeah, yeah. The confidential yeah. items. Um, so the exclusion of public got 7.1, 7.2, 7.3. Um, these three items are for consideration in confidence. So seeking a mover and seconder for motion uh, to order the exclusion of the public for item 7.1. Councillor Abram today. We have a seconder. Councillor Knoll. Would you like to speak to him? Okay. Councillor Knoll. Yes, Councillor Martin. Well, uh, Chair, I'd like to speak against this uh, being heard in confidence. Um, when the majority of the council voted um, a few weeks ago now not to do an East West bikeway, um, um, there was a bit of angst in the cycling community and uh, consequently, as we now know, the state government has agreed to give us almost three million towards cycling infrastructure, provided we put three million in. And in the Adelaide cycling networks on social media and in newsletters, there's a lot of talk, a lot of expectation that this money is going to lead to a debate. And in fact, uh, my colleague, Councillor Canole told uh, in Daily that there hadn't really been- Are you talking in relation to the matter in- Yes, I am. So I, am. Um, I think we're, yeah. Yeah. just need to- Yeah, I'm saying to you um, that Councillor Canole said, and it's been widely reported, and there's been discussion in the well, media. I don't think that. No, 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 no. Really I'm talking about expectation, Chair. Yeah, but you're you're talking about, I can understand your uh, discussion, Councillor Martin, in regards to why this item will need to be, in your opinion, need to not be in confidence. However, you don't need to bring up other councillors' explanations in regards to what is being put in the media. That's where I draw a line. Well, Thank Chair, you. I can see you're very firm, but yes, I'm I am. So I would like you to continue with.
with your discussion in why you believe that I'm this item should be heard. I'm trying to keep shouting at me, Chair. Oh, I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm close to the microphone. I'm very sorry about that. So I'm not shouting at you. I'm close to the microphone. I'm trying to be very clear to you that to not overstep the line in regards to Chair, other councillors' discussion I'm happy to in the media. There is. Because then, then I'm that happy, is not Chair, there. will you let me finish? I'm, I'm just, happy. I'm, I'm happy to oblige you. I'm happy to oblige Thank you. you. I'm saying to you that there is an expectation in the community, created in media and on social media, for there to be a consultative process. And therefore, to put this item then into confidence, denying the community the opportunity to participate in any consultative process is, in my view, inappropriate. And indeed, I've had emails today from uh, cyclists saying, uh, one of them said, I feel aggrieved. What is the, uh, the justification? And, and I'm asking, can we just consider the cycling community? And instead of putting this in confidence, will members vote against putting it into confidence and talk about it publicly? Thank you. That's absolutely fair to say, Councillor Martin. Um, but anyone else would like to speak to this item? Um, so we are going to take it to a vote to hear this matter in confidence. Those in favour? Those against? Motion's carried. Uh, so therefore I'm seeking a move and a second for the motion of the exclusion of public for item 7.2 for the contract renewal of the Christmas decorations. Councillor Adamson, a seconded. Councillor Canole. Anyone would like to speak? Would you like to speak to him? Would you like to speak to Councillor Canole? No, anyone else? Thank you. I will take this to a vote. Those in favour? Those against? Motion's carried. Um, and the other item to consider in confidence is item 7.3 for the Gawler Place at U Park. Priority work, so Councillor Edmund today. Councillor Canole, seconder. Anyone like to speak to it? No. Um, let's take this to a vote. Those in favour? Those against? <coughs> Motion's carried. Thank you, those that are not involved with items 7.1.